In this video, we're going to show you and talk about Git. We're going to demonstrate what Git is, how it works, um, why we want to use it, and we'll give you some demonstrations on it. So let's begin. If you look at my image here that I have, what Git is, it's called version control. It was, it was created by the same guy that created Linux, Linus Torvalds. It is the most used version control application that's out there right now. Um, if you don't know what version control is, let me explain. When you're a programmer and you usually go work for a business, there are usually you're collaborating with a lot of other people and you work really hard to create your code really nice and to work perfectly. Well, when you end up working with other people and you're coding and developing, what likely happens is someone else is working on some other feature or part of that code. You're maybe working on this part, they're working on that part, someone else is working on that part. And what happens is, is when you merge those codes together from this person working on that part and they merge it with your part and we put end up putting them together, sometimes things break, which really kind of sucks, right? Um, you worked really hard on your code and now it is broken. Now, as system administrators, you may only do some scripts and stuff like that. You may not be collaborating with a lot of people or you may be as well, um, but you will likely be working with developers and managing a Git repository or a Git server. Uh, so you need to be familiar with Git even if you're not going to use it firsthand. Although, if you are going to be creating any scripts, I highly recommend that you use Git to help manage all your scripting and your coding. Now, what version control does is when we have these different mergers that happen, it allows you to create a snapshot and go back a version before it was broken or to branch out different versions of code so that one person can be working on this version and another person can be working on this version and then you can merge it together. If you look at my image here on the screen, usually you start out with a master, you know, a core start. It could be a blank file, whatever, right? And then what will happen is you branch out your work and you start working on what you need to work on, right? And um, someone else starts working on maybe the master branch and then maybe they split off here in yellow and they start working on something else. But whatever's on master should be what is the core code, right? The, the code that should work, right? The code that's not broken, the code that's not being tested, right? The work that you're doing and the work that this person, someone else is doing in yellow is in progress, right? Each dot is a progression point. It is a save point. It's called a commit, right? So each dot there represents, oh, I saved my work. Another dot is I saved my work. Now, let's say you are working along your little path here. This path is called a branch. And let's say this third dot right here, you screw up something and you just screw it up royally. What you can do is you can revert back to this old version of your code right there where everything was hunky-dory and everything was working great. And then you can move forward as if that one had never existed, right? Now, when it comes time, eventually you will want to work and merge your work with the master branch, right? You want to merge yours with what is actually going to be distributed and handed out. That's called a merge. You're merging your branch down into the core code, which is the master, right? And eventually someone else is going to do that and they're eventually going to merge to the code. And Git kind of handles all that merging and branching and taking away and those snapshots back to previous code. This is what Git does. Now, are there other things out there that does what Git does? Yes, they are. But Git by far is the most popular, the most used, um, tool that's out there and probably the most sophisticated that's out there. So we're going to demonstrate how to use Git now. So the first thing you need to do is we need to open up the command line and you need to create a folder for your project or for your code, right? So we're going to start from the very beginning right here where we start a master and initiate a actual Git what's called a Git repository. It's a storage area for all your code, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a folder, right? Now I have all these folders and all these projects. I'm going to go into this info 1121. It's a blank folder that I just created. All these other folders are other projects that I'm working on or they're other projects other people have, right? 
So you create a folder for each folder. So I'm gonna go into info number 20. I'm in there and as you can see, there is nothing in this folder whatsoever. Now, let's go ahead and initiate Git. We're gonna create a repository. So the way we do this is we use the git command, git init, and it created an empty git repository. And it tells you it created this .git file. Well, let's see if I type ls-a, oh, that has been created. Well, what's in there? Let's look. A bunch of these files, I don't know what those are, branches and hooks and info and everything else. Don't worry too much about what's in that file. You really don't need to touch that unless you're an advanced Git user. But what you need to know about that .git file is this keeps track of all the changes, all the branches, all these splits of work, all this merging of work, so that you can then snapshot back or you can merge stuff and other things. It controls all of this stuff. Anytime you make any changes, changes um, this Git file records that, logs it, and records it. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Now that we have created our Git repository, we want to register it to ourselves. Okay, which means you're just going to assign it that this belongs to you and you are going to give it an email address. So we're going to do this with git config global user. Oops, it's user dot email. And then you type in your email, which this is my Gmail account. There you go. Now it knows that it's you. I'm going to hit this up arrow and I'm going to go back a little bit here. And I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put in name. And then it wants us to put in just your name. if I can get this to work. There we go. So this second command, all you're changing is instead of email, you're changing it to name and then you're putting in your full name. There we go. Now this has been assigned to you. This is your Git repository, right? You own it now. And what we're doing is we're changing some of these files in here in Git. When we use this Git command and configure, it's changing part of this configuration file in here and logging that this belongs to you. All right, so now let's go ahead and create some files. Let's create some code or whatever else, right? So I'm going to create a really simple um, file. I'm just going to call this main.sh. And this takes us, us into Vim. And it really doesn't matter for this example what we're doing. We're not going to be dealing with real code. So I'm just going to say, hello, everybody, exclamation point. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now we have this main, oh, if I actually do ls-a, we have our little git folder and we have the code that I just created, right? Let's make sure we know what's in there. It says, hello, everybody in there, right? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this to what's called staging, okay? And we use the git add command, and then we're gonna type main, what we want to save or stage. So we're gonna stage this, which just means we're gonna get ready to do something with it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and enter. If you don't get an error, you're good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to commit it. Now, committing is an actual save. It's you're actually saving your work and what you did. It's that snapshot. Remember this, what I showed you? These little dots, right? So I'm still in the master branch. I'm going right here and I'm making a save, right? So that I can then go back to this version again if I want to, right? So that's what a commit is. The add, it just stages it up for that and then the commit actually ends up saving it and committing it, right? So we do git commit, and then we're gonna do a dash M for a message because anytime you have a saving point, like one of these little dots here, you wanna put some type of note in there so that um, you know what 
is in that version, right? Because if you need to go back to it, and let's say you have a hundred different versions of where you save things, um, if you don't have descriptions, it's difficult to know exactly what you're going back to. So we're going to just do um, start of project, right? Just means it's the beginning, right? And I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And you'll see, you should actually see that one file was changed, one file was inserted, and that was created, meaning that file right there was actually added now to our Git repository. It was committed and saved. Now, we can go ahead and look at a few things here, right? We can look at a few statistics and what's going on. We can do Git status, and it says right now I'm on the master branch, and there's nothing to commit, and everything we're working with is clean. Um, the branch that we're working on, the main branch is clean, meaning there's no um, conflicts between code, nothing is breaking, things like that. Everything seems to be working fine. Git show. And what git show does is it shows us our commit. Look at here, this is a number, a little hash, that represents the commit, the save that we did. And look at, it timestamps it with the time and the date. It puts our little note in there that we put in there, right? And it tells you that it um, it saved it and it actually gives you even what the code is. That we added, that's what the plus is. Remember in Linux 1 when we did those diff and compare and we compared two files and what changed? Uh, the plus means that we added this new line. If we took away something, it would be a minus. So we can hit Q to get out of this. Now we can also do git log, which kind of shows us a compressed view of everything, right? Not as much detail, but git log will become very important here in a second. Okay. Now, now that we've created this, we're ready to branch. We want multiple people to start working on our project, right? So we are going to now create a branch. We're going to create a new feature or we're going to work on kind of um, a new addition to this project or this code that we're creating, right? So we're going to go ahead and create a new branch. And all we're doing is if we look at this here, we're in the master and we're going to branch out and create basically a split version of this. We're going to have two versions of our code. One is the standard stable, that solid, and we know it works. And the other one we're going to experiment with. We're going to change it up. We're going to do other things with it because we don't want to jack up the the main part, right? We don't want to screw that that code up. So we're going to branch in. So we're going to create and branch out here to like this blue part. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So the command to do this, let me start up at the top here. All right, what we need to do is we do git checkout dash b for branch because we're going to create a new branch and we're going to go new code. Now, notice in my prompt it changes because I kind of have my prompt all all kind of fancied out, right? Um, but don't you on on the typical bash prompt you won't get any of this. So how can you know that we're actually in a new branch? Well, let's look here. We can do uh, git branch dash a for all and see it will list that we have a master and then in green and with the star next to it it says new code that means I'm in the new code branch that is the new branch right we have the master branch which here is green and then I've split off and I'm going up and do some new coding right now even though I've kind of split it let's look at what files I still have oh I still have the git and I still have the main if I look at the main it still says hello everybody. I've split it. I made a copy of it and I've split it. Now any changes I make in this new will not affect the master whatsoever. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Right? I'm going to go ahead and do vim main.sh. Here it is. I'm going to go down and say goodbye everybody. And we'll do question mark. Goodbye, everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. There we go, right? We have that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this and then commit it, right, to this branch. So it's only part of my version. It's never going to affect the master. So let's go ahead and look at that. So I do git add 
main.sh. Oh, let's do something else first too, right? I can even add files here, right? So, so far I just have the main sh file and that file, right? Let's do touch and I have a menu of some kind, list, menu list of some kind, right? So now I have this main, I have another file. Usually when you're coding, there's multiple files that are part of your code. Um, so now I've just created another file. So now let's go ahead and save all this. So we have changes in this main sh file and we actually even created a new file. Let's go see what happens here. So we're gonna go get add and I can type main.sh and menu and everything else like that if I want, but I can just do dot and it just means anything new, anything new since I created this branch, right? And I'll just do that and a dot kind of does that for me. And now I'm going to commit it, right? Remember commit means saving it and I'm gonna do the dash M so that I create a message added a good buy is what I did, right? And look at that. It says two files changed, one insertion. All right. Well, let's look at what happened here. Let's look at our git log. Git log. Oh, look at this. Remember before we just had this. Every commit that you do adds a new entry to the log because it's now a snapshot where you can go back to that code, right? So in the first one, we have the start of the project and if I wanted to, and that was built on the master, right? And then I added goodbye on this timestamp in this code and who did it? It was Jared. Now, if someone else changed the code, they would have their name for it. That's another reason why we identify ourselves with those commands that we first did at the beginning of this Git activity. Um, is so that whoever changes the code, you have documentation of who did what, right? And anyway, this change where we added goodbye is part of the new code. I can hit Q to go ahead and get out of that. Okay, so now we have our branch. We made our changes, right? We added some dots here, which is our commits. Now, let's go back to master and see if we screwed up anything there, right? Because we kind of changed the code. We put that goodbye in there. And maybe that goodbye isn't necessary. Or maybe that goodbye breaks something. Or maybe that goodbye breaks something that the someone else adds in or something else. Let's go back. So how do we get back to our master branch? So we do git checkout master. Now you can see I can, if I do git branch dash a, you'll see that the star is now on master. I'm not in new code anymore. I can hit quit to get out of there. My, I have this cool little prompt which changes me and tells me that I'm now in master. Um, by default, your bash will not show that. So now let's go look at what I have. If I do ls-a, notice I only have the main sh. Let's see what's in there. It just says hello, everybody. The goodbye, everybody, is not there because we have two versions of our code. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So um, this is what Git does, and it does it really well with this branching. All right. Now let's go back to Git log. Look at that. Git log only has this recorded in this branch. Only the other branch has both. The, the master has no idea what's happening in that other branch, right? So let's go ahead, let's go back and show you how to revert back to things. So I'm gonna go back to the new code branch and the way I do that is just git checkout new code. Now it says here I switched to the branch new code. Now if I do ls-a again, I have my menu list, I have my main, if I do cat main.sh, hey, there we go, right? Now you're like, this is a lot of work. Why don't we just make copies of the code and then borrow it, make changes and then merge? And that's the way people used to do it back in the day before Git and before version control. But they found that when they work together, when you have five or 10 other developers working on something, when you start merging all those codes, um, it gets really, really messy. And so Git has some really cool features, which really 
can't be explained until you're doing something like that with five other people and they're messing up your code and you have to snap back and things like that. But hopefully you can get a taste of what Git is doing um, with this demonstration, which is what I'm hopefully trying to do. Now, well, let's go ahead and make another change in this new code. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Vim again and open up our main.sh again and I'm going to add one more line that's going to go that's going to be um, oh I screwed up yep and let's go ahead and save that and close it now I do cat and I do main sh I screwed up but you know what I'm not noticing that I screwed up right everything's good still so I'm going to go ahead and add this And then I'm going to commit it. Dash M, lift a message, and possible mess up. All right. Let's go ahead and look at our Git log. Oh, look at this. Now we have three versions here. We have the master, where we branched off from the master, and then we added goodbye, and then we did a possible mess up but we're not sure yet right and and we did that all in our new code and we have timestamps we know exactly who did it right so everything everybody's accounted for if anyone screwed up right so if people see my mess up they know exactly who did it and what time I mess things up right I'm gonna hit Q to get out of that now maybe I'm reviewing my code and go oh Dang, I messed up. Um, not good. Let's let's change things here, right? So now this is where the benefit of Git can happen. Now, what I'm going to show you is one approach. There are several different methodologies and approaches on how to kind of revert back, depending on exactly what you want to do. All right, that will have to come later. I'm just going to show you one method. Okay, so. First thing is first, um, I'm going to open up mouse pad here. And if you had two terminals, you can do this as well. But I'm going to uh, look at the git log again. And I want to go back to where I just had goodbye, not where I had the mess up. So I want to go back to one version. What I need is this hash right here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to save it here because it's long. So I don't want to delete it. So I'm going to hit Q to go out of that. And then what I can do is I can do git checkout. And I can paste in that hash. Now it's going to give me some warnings and some other ways of being able to handle this if I need to and things like that. For instance, if I wanted to, um, I noticed this and I wanted to branch this off again into another branch, right? Because on this picture here, this is a very simple branching um, an algorithm or layout for Git, right? As just an example. But really, from my work, I can branch again, or other people can take my work and branch out and do five other branches. You can branch from a branch, and you can continue branching out and creating multiple versions. And in the real world, in enterprise, um, these are very diverse, lots of branches. You branch for everything and you branch off branches of branches, right? Um, and it gets very, very complex. And so here, this is just warning me again. If I want to create a new branch from this change that I've done, I can do that if I want to using the git switch C and just give it a new name and then that'll branch off my new code, what I currently have, right? Um, otherwise, if I want to undo this, I can always do git switch that and it just takes me back to where I was before. Do you see how you can kind of just easily switch back, flip, make a branch, things like that? This is the power of git is being able to do these things, right? So now that I am in and checked out and reverted back to this version, let's see what we have here. LS-A. Okay, I still got that. Let's see what's in the main. Oh, look at that. It's just hello and goodbye, everybody. Oh, sounds pretty good. I don't have that mess up anymore. The mess up 
as if it never happened. Now we can do other things. There's things called hard resets. It's still there our mess up if we wanted to keep it. Um, that's why we can branch off and then go on and just kind of let that mess up be recorded and uh, uh, we'll pretend like it's not there, even though it is, if we need to track it and record it, um, we can do that. We can do something called a hard reset or a soft reset um, to our code, but that's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm trying to show you here today. Um, I'm just showing you how you can easily kind of go back to the code that you had. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to where I was. So I'm going to do git switch dash. And now I'm back to new code, even with my mistake that's there, right? Which is fine. So when I was back in this, I could branch things off, which is most likely what you would do. You would change your code and then merge that back to master. Now, um, and you can do a lot of other things. Git is just a tool. It's like a, a word processor or a spreadsheet or some other type of tool where um, how you use it is really up to you, right? Um, and that's where kind of things get a little hazy, right? Use it the way you need to use it. So I'm just showing you a few different options on what's possible, right? Like with a, a, a word processor, you can use it just to type up a letter. You can use it to... Um, create an inventory list or to-do list. You can use it to create a flyer or a pamphlet, right? You can use it in different ways. You can use it to create some tables or things like that. Um, but really there's not one way to use it, right? It's a tool to be used and it has some strengths and weaknesses and things like that. Git is exactly the same way, okay? So the way I'm using it and demonstrating it to you right now is just one way, okay? So that being said, Let's go ahead with uh, this new code that we have. Um, we know that we have these two branches. We're going to merge what we have here in the new code with our master branch, even with my screw up there. All right. Now, we, uh, technically, we can go back. We can fix that. We can snap back and things like that. But just understand um, the basic concepts is all we're doing here. So I'm going to now go and get back to the master by checking it out. So as I switch back to master, my confirms it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do now, remember cat main. I just have that and I only have the main file. I don't have anything else. And the only thing in my main is that. So here's how we merge. Now merge can be tricky, particularly when you're merging a bunch of branches together. Usually you try and merge two branches, then merge another two branches, two branches and, and work your way down like that. Um, but many times there will be differences and conflicts that will have to be resolved and the code will have to be go fixed. That's more advanced features and other things we, you can look at later um, and kind of beyond the scope of this introduction. So let's go ahead and uh, merge this. So we do git merge, not merger. What do we want to merge? We want to merge new code. Let's go ahead and do that. Boom. That's it. I did git merge new code. Well, let's see what we have now in our master. I am in master. I can do ls dash a and look at that. I have that. Hey, I have a new file. That must have been from new code, right? If I do cat main, there we go. And now our main has everything that new code has as well right? They have been merged successfully. Now, like I said, many times you might get conflicts which might need to go be resolved um, before they're actually merged correctly. Um, you can reject merges sometimes. Like if someone adds some changes, you can reject and go, no, fix your stuff before we merge it, right? Um, things like that. This is all the power of Git. Now, we can go ahead and look at our Git log and see what we have here right? So look at, we still have our project. We have our, our added goodbye. We have our possible mess up, but look it up here. It says master was merged to new code. Master and new code are essentially the same now, right? So if I wanted to, I can go back to new code. I can additionally make more changes if I wanted to and things like that. But this is, was just a short introduction to Git. 
and what Git can actually do. Now, let me show you one other thing, kind of the power of Git as well. There are people who have taken Git and have created servers with them and websites to be able to explore Git and to be able to share your Git code with other people. So your Git folder that you have, you can upload to some of these other sites and share your awesome um, hello everybody, goodbye everybody code with the whole world if you want, right? Or it can just be a backup place so that you can access it from other devices. Two of the more popular Git places is GitHub. This is GitHub. And I have an account on GitHub. And you can go ahead and explore other people's codes and scripts in a various amount of languages um, and things like that. You can type in keywords here to search um, certain things. I'm going to type in games. I don't know what comes up. Oh, here's some games that people have posted in code and oh, a bubble game, block game, DOS games, right? Whatever else they wanted to put on there. I have my repositories here. Most of them are for to teach and as examples. Um, I have something called Best Websites, which I use just for my class and for students. Um, it's one of these many repositories that I have. But let's say you go to my repository here. Um, this is all based off Git. There are branches that are here that you can look at. Um, you can request to make changes and other things uh, and it has other features. Now, let's say you wanted my code. You wanted to be able to copy it and download it, right? Well, there's another git command that you can we can do here. If you go to my code right here, you can click on this and you can download it as a zip file, but that's not geeky enough, right? We have this little, I'm going to do HTTPS. We do HTTPS, you can highlight this right here, or you can click on this little copy icon here, and that copies this URL, which is a link to this best website's code, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We copy this, now how do we download it? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to get out of this folder. Now we're just in our regular projects folder, and I'm going to do git clone. I want to clone that repository. That's not it. There it is. That's my best websites, right? My username on there is data think monkey. And now if I hit enter, it's going to download that best websites repository. It's downloaded 100%. If I type ls, I should now see a best websites folder, which I didn't have before, right? Now I can go into this best websites. And if I cat the list, there's all my websites right there, right from my list. And I have my readme. What's my readme? Let me show you that. It's just my, my introduction that shows up right here, right? Best website. It's this. It's this. No, right here. All my best websites, right? All my best websites. This is an example of it for, yeah, right? And that's that's pretty much the extent of this Git repository. Nothing too impressive. But what I can do now is now that I have this code, I can create a new branch from it, right? I can add to it. I can modify it. I can change it. That's the power of open source and what's awesome. So GitHub is just one of those resources. It is owned by Microsoft now. It used to be its own company, but Microsoft ended up buying it just a little while ago. Another very popular site is called GitLab. And it does the same thing. It has a little bit different interface look and feel. The buttons are laid out a little bit differently, but it all does the same thing. I only have one repository on here and it's called My Git Notes. And again, you can go here to clone. And if you wanted to download this, you can just copy here. And then again, you can go here. I'm going to get out of this folder. And you can do git clone. And I can just right click and paste. And it downloads it. It, it uses all the same git commands, but it's from the website here. That's here. So that should download and install, right? There's also a uh, Bitbucket and a few other resources online. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope uh, you better understand what Git is, 
how it's used, and um, the reason why we have Git, because it really is a great tool.